Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to multiply fractions using cancellation. And cancellation is a way to simplify fractions before we multiply. This gives us smaller and easier numbers to work with. Understanding and using cancellation can make problems a lot simpler and easier to work through. So let's get into our four examples here and start with number one, where we have 14 fifteenths times 5 sixteenths. What we need to do first is look for common factors between the numerators, the top numbers here, and the denominators, so top and bottom. We are not looking for common factors horizontally or side to side, so always top and bottom. Think of it like simplifying fractions, but you can use all of the numbers within the problem. So for example, looking for common uh, factors here, I know that 15 and 5 have a common factor of 5. So let's divide both 15 and 5 by that common factor of 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Let's take a look at 14 and 16 to see if they have any common factors besides 1. And they do. They have a common factor of 2. So let's divide both of those by 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So I'm going to rewrite my problem here. And we have 7 over 3 times 1 over 8. And we multiply fractions by going straight across. So we get 7 24ths. Always check to see if we can simplify further here, but 7 24ths is in simplest form. The only common factor between 7 and 24 is 1. So we are done. So you can see that we got much simpler and easier numbers to work with compared to the original problem. So let me rewrite the original problem here. 14 15ths times 5 16ths. So 14 times 5 is going to give us 70, and 15 times 16 is going to give us 240. So you can see that those multiplication problems there are a little more complex and the numbers are greater in value than our cancellation version there of 7 over 3 times 1 over 8. And also, 70 over 240, that's going to take a lot more simplifying and work there. So you can see that the cancellation made everything simpler. Now, 70 over 240 is equivalent to what we got with the cancellation. We would just need to simplify that and break that down, and it would eventually get to 7 24ths. On to number 2, where we have 7 18 times 6 7 so we need to look at numerators and denominators, top and bottom. And we can see that we have a 7 and a 7 here. So a common factor of 7 between those 7s. So divide each by 7, and we get 1. 7 divided by 7 is 1. All right, let's take a look at 18 and 6 here. So do we have any common factors? Yes, 2, 3, and 6. Let's use the greatest common factor of 6, that way, we have less simplifying in the end once we get our answer. If you don't use the greatest common factor between two numbers, that's fine. You're just going to have more simplifying in the end. So we'll divide 18 and 6 by 6. So 18 divided by 6 is 3. And 6 divided by 6 is 1. So we end up with 1 over 3 times 1 over 1. And that's going to get us 1 third. And one third is in simplest form, so we are done. Now again, you can do 7 18 times 6 7 and keep it as is, and you will get the same answer. It's just going to take more simplifying um, at the end there, and you do have larger numbers in value to work with, 7 times 6 and 18 times 7. So on to number three, where we have 2 thirds times 27, so a fraction times a whole number. What we need to do here is we'll write 2 thirds, and we need to make 27 into a fraction so we have a numerator and a denominator. And all we need to do, if we have a whole number, we put it over 1, and that's equivalent to 27. We didn't change the value of 27. 
we just converted it to a fraction where we have a numerator and a denominator. So let's see if we have any common factors between our numerators and denominators. And yes, we do. 3 and 27 both have a common factor of 3. So let's divide both by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 27 divided by 3 is 9. So let's multiply straight across. 2 times 9 is 18. And 1 times 1 is 1. So we get 18 over 1, which is just 18. And lastly, number 4, where we have a mixed number times a fraction. So whenever we have a mixed number, we want to convert it to an improper fraction here. So we have a numerator and a denominator. And we can do that by multiplying and then adding. So multiply the denominator by the whole number. 9 times 2 is 18 plus the numerator of 2. So again, 9 times 2 is 18 plus 2 gives us 20 ninths. And if you need more help with converting mixed numbers to improper fractions, I'll drop that link down in the description. And 4 fifths we keep as is. So let's see here if we have any common factors between the numerators and the denominators. So 20 and 5 both have a common factor of 5 there. So let's divide 20 and 5 by 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So we get to 4 times 4 is 16. And 9 times 1 is 9. So we get an improper fraction of 16 ninths. So we need to convert it to a mixed number here. So 16 divided by 9 is going to give us our whole number. So how many whole 9's out of 16? Well, one whole 9 with a remainder of 7 and we keep our denominator the same. So 1 and 7 ninths. So again, what I did there, 16 divided by 9, how many whole groups of 9 out of 16? Well, 1 with the remainder of 7, that's going to be our numerator here, and we keep the denominator of 9 the same. So there you have it. There's how you multiply fractions using cancellation. And before I end here, I do want to mention that this only works for fraction multiplication and fraction division. And for fraction division, once a fraction division problem is converted to a multiplication problem, that's when you can use this. This does not work for adding and subtracting fractions. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.